Hi, my name is Tim and I'm one of the founders of Book That In. And if you've just created your account with us, firstly, welcome. It's great to have you here. And uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your company on Book That In. Uh, so you will have hopefully seen a page a little bit like this um, and you've just created your account. And now you want to set up your company. So the first thing you do is you click on the Create Company link and you'll be presented with the form which you will need to complete. Um, so I'll walk you through each of the different fields and show you what you should be putting in. So for the uh, the first question is, is this company part of a franchise? If, uh, if not, you can just ignore this and leave it set to no. If you do have a franchise or and you want to link to their parent account, all you have to do is switch that to yes and then do a search for the, uh, the franchise in question. You will see their name turn up in the search bar. You can select that name and you can go for it from there. And we're going to leave it set to no for now. On this one, we're going to set up uh, a demo company on the account. So you put in the company name that you'd like people to see when they book with you or when they are um, uh, requesting information. Company description, this will show on your profile page. Uh, so your your company's homepage. So put in uh, a description of the services you offer uh, that will tell people a bit more about your uh, your sessions. So I will put in a, a nice short description there, but you can put in as much as you want, and you can use obviously the the editing icons here to uh, to change that. Are you open for business now? Typically, if you are open and you're creating a company, the answer will be yes. Uh, this, doesn't, this doesn't mean, is it, if it's a Saturday, are you open right now? This just means generally, is your business trading? Uh, and we'll set that to yes uh, in most cases. The company registration field here for the booking widget footer. This is some information that you might want to appear when people are booking. Typically, the most popular thing to put in here would be a link to your email address or your phone number. So that if people have questions while booking, they can see your contact details right there and get in touch nice and easily. So I'll put in my email address and if needs be you can use the link option here to create a link to the email address. The next option down says logo so you can choose a file from your logo. It needs to be an image file so a JPEG or a PNG something like that and you can upload a logo to your account. Category uh, it shows you the different categories that we've got set up on Book That In if people are searching for companies by their category. So choose the one that's most appropriate. The time zone, for most people, you'll be in the UK, so uh, just leave that black, leave that as it is. Um, this will adjust the, uh, the times of any bookings to your local time zone. Public email, website, phone number, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. Just complete those as you would with your company details on there. At the bottom then you'll see there's a few options. We have a public option. We, we can switch that to private if you don't want people to discover your business through Book That In. You can keep it off the record if you like. But most businesses will obviously want bookings and they'll be public. If you're going to be accepting payments through Book That In then switch accept payments to yes and that will allow you to set up and link a Stripe account once we've completed this form. If you already have a Stripe account, all you have to do is log in um, when it's when prompted and it will link up your Stripe account to book that in so you can start taking payments straight away. Send admin emails and send admin emails to the company owner. If you select yes for send admin emails, that will by default send emails to the, the staff member responsible for that booking type, that type of booking that someone's just made. Uh, if that's just you, if you're a one-man band, that's totally fine. Just set that to yes and it will send you as the company owner emails whenever you get a booking. If you have a team around you and you want the person, the staff member who's responsible for that particular type of booking to receive emails, then the top one should be set to yes. And if you would also like to receive emails when people book, then you'll send, you'll click send emails to company owner to yes as well. Then lastly, class auto re-enrollment. This is a general setting 
uh, for our special auto re-enrollment feature. Uh, you have an option to opt out or opt in. Uh, that just means that when the system sends out emails for the auto re-enrollment, it will either give people an option to opt out of the auto re-enrollment or it will have, give them the option to opt in. So the most standard one is the opt out option here. On your address, please enter your home address um, or your head office address so that uh, we have a record of that. The compulsory fields are the first letter, sorry, the first address field, the town and the postcode. And then click next where it says additional comments. If you are, if you need to add in some comments about parking instructions or anything like that, directions, for example, for this venue, then you can add them in the additional comments there. On the next screen, we have your policies. So the top box is for your terms and conditions and the bottom one is for your privacy policy. So copy and paste in your terms and conditions and privacy policy here, or if you already have them on your site, you can add in a link using the, the link function here and just say, please view our terms and conditions here. Then we'll hit next. Oh, I should say on this on this previous form with the terms and conditions, when you enter them in there, that means that when people book, they will be automatically shown a tick box they need to tick when they are making a booking, which means they agree to your T's and C's and your privacy policy. And the last screen of the wizard is what we call our metadata. And that's a fancy word for the questions that you want to ask on your booking form. So we've got a few here at the top, which are default ones. And if you tick these, if the customer um, uses, sorry, if the customer has used the system before, it will the system will pre-fill as many of the questions as possible to make it a nice and quick and easy process for them. So I'm going to pick first name, surname and mobile number, and I'll make those mandatory so they have to complete them uh, when they make their booking. But I also want to collect a few more bits of information, so I'll add a new field here. And I'll walk you through a couple of the options you've got here because it's quite clever in terms of the questions you can ask. So let's say I run parent and child classes and I want to collect the child's name. So I can put that in here. I will make it mandatory because I do want people to give me that information. Um, I will leave data protection set to no and I'll explain why in a minute. The field level I can set to booking or participant level. The booking level means I ask this question once for each booking. The participant level means I ask this question each for each and every participant in the booking. So I will use this at participant level because it is about one of the participants and if I had multiple children on the booking I would want to ask that question for each of the participants. So I'll put that at participant level. And then I've got an option for type of input, various things I can choose but in this case single line text is perfect for me um, so they can just enter their child's name. I'm also going to ask for their date of birth I'll make that mandatory as well and I'll put that at participant level because it's about the participant and this time for the type of input I'm going to choose the date picker from the bottom. I'm going to ask them if they would if they're happy for us to take photos for a photo permission because we've got children coming I want to make sure that we are uh, we know if we are um, allowed to take photos for marketing purposes so again I'll make this mandatory um, this time I'll leave it at the booking level because um, I, this will apply to all of the participants. I don't need to have, make them answer this for each and every child. And for the type of input, I'm going to put it as a drop down. And then I can enter the various options I want. And in this case, I just want a simple yes and no option. But these options could be anything you want for uh, a drop down type of question. Lastly, I'm going to ask if they want to opt in to our marketing emails. And this question is a data protection question. And what we mean by that is that, that will, this will add an extra checkbox at the bottom of the form, which they have, well, they don't have to tick, but they can tick in order to agree to this question. And if we do that, we can filter by this question when we're searching our clients later on. So I'm going to make this a data protection field. 
and that eliminates, as you can see, some of the other options. I'm not going to make it mandatory because people can select yes or no for this. It's totally their option. And uh, I'm now going to click save. And when I do that, um, because I haven't selected take payments, it's taking me straight to uh, the next stage, which will walk me through setting up either a group event, an appointment or a subscription so I can start taking bookings. Uh, if you have selected to take payments, you'll have that step first and then you'll be redirected to this page. But the company's set up and we're now ready to go to the next stage. I'll see you in a bit.